Hey everybody, this is Mike from Beyond Two Wheels. Um, I was supposed to go riding this weekend, but unfortunately the crazy California weather is not going to allow me to do that. So, um, among some other things, but there's a storm coming in that's supposed to pretty much uh, drown us here for the next couple days. So uh, I'll show you what it looks like outside. So uh, it's February, or no, I'm sorry, today is March 5th. Um, and this is what it looks like. You can see how quickly the clouds are moving. Um, we're supposed to go do camping trip in Hollister, but uh, it's just a little crazy out there. It probably wouldn't have been a whole lot of fun. So instead, we're going to do a review video. So I decided since I couldn't go out and ride, I wanted to do a little uh, review video on uh, some of the stuff that I use on a pretty regular basis. Um, some camping gear and some gear that I carry on my bike. First of all, I want to talk about um, my specific, the actual gear that I use to camp with and sleep with. Um, this is a tent from Walmart. Um, it's an Ozark Trail 7x7 two-person tent. Um, it's plenty of room just for me, and as you can see by the size of my hand, you know, it's about three hands big. Um, I think it's a, I'm going to say it's probably about 10 inches tall by about uh, maybe 20 inches wide. Um, it packs up pretty small if you learn how to fold it the right way um, everything fits inside this little container inside there's actually a piece of cardboard um, it's like a cardboard tube a square tube and if you kind of use that as a guide when you're folding up the tent um, it will actually fold back into this nice little carrying case every time and then it takes up a lot less space in your bag um, along with my tent i always carry tarp um, Sometimes I feel like I need to put the tarp below like if the ground's really wet or um, Sometimes you can use this as an extra fly over the top of the tent with some either bungees or straps that I have on my bike um, And uh, it's just it's just always good to carry a tent because you never know you might even just need To throw it up as a shelter to work on your bike under if you're stuck on the side of the road or something So it's just a great thing to carry um, These are about I want to say they're like eight dollars at Walmart I think I paid $39 for the tent. Um, I'm, I'm pretty cheap, so this is all pretty cheap stuff, but it works pretty good. Next, um, I know a lot of guys are probably frowning on this, but this thing probably weighs about four or five pounds, and it is a twin single high air mattress. And it's the Coleman brand, and I love it. It's uh, real sturdy. Um, it's it's thicker than most. Uh, the material is thicker than most, so it's it's a lot harder to get it punctured, um, and it's a whole lot better than sleeping on the ground. So I know a lot of guys use those little foam pads and everything else because they're lighter, but really, um, other than the weight, this packs down just about as much as uh, just about as small as any of the other pads. They don't really pack down any smaller than this. Um, the, most of the pads that I've seen packed down to about the size of my sleeping bag. So this is actually better. And along with that, I think I paid like $40 for that uh, air mattress. And along with that, I carry this pump. And everybody thinks this pump is hilarious until they see how fast it airs up and airs down my bed. That's right, you heard that. Um, I have a 12 volt socket on my motorcycle, so I just start my bike up, plug this thing in, and my air mattress is fully inflated in about five minutes. Then, when I need to fold it up, I actually take this piece off and put it on the top here like it is right now, and insert it in the end of the air mattress, and I actually vacuum the mattress down, which is how it folds down so tightly. I think this thing was like $9 at Walmart. Next, I have my sleeping bag. Um, this particular sleeping bag is a summer sleeping bag. I'm also going to get one, um, a mummy bag that goes down to 10 degrees. Uh, I used this sleeping bag last uh, November, I think it was. And uh, the temperatures got down to 
uh, below 40, and uh, I definitely felt it. I was pretty cold in the sleeping bag. Plus, I'm a pretty large guy, and uh, it it's just wasn't wide enough to fit over my chest area. Uh, I couldn't zip it up, so I ended up actually sleeping underneath my motorcycle jacket. So, um, if you're a big guy, I wouldn't recommend this sleeping bag, the Ozark Trail one, uh, 75 by 33. Um, I mean, it, it, it helped, but it wasn't, uh, it, it didn't really keep me that warm. I ended up throwing my, uh, motorcycle gear over the top of it to keep me warm, and then I was able to sleep good. Um, all of these things, this, the tarp, uh, my air mattress, and that sleeping bag all fit in a 20 inch duffel bag that I strapped to the top of my, uh, rear rack. And um, they're, it's all pretty light, so I usually put the heavier stuff down in my saddlebags. Um, all my tools, my clothes, my food, all that stuff goes down in my saddlebags. So this stuff packs up pretty small. Um, like I said, I use like a $10 Walmart duffel bag and strapped it to the top of my bike. Because uh, if you check out my um, the Sheet Iron 300 video, you'll see how I had it packed. Um, it looks kind of bulky, but it was actually pretty light, and the bike handled great. Next, I'm going to move on to some miscellaneous gear that I think um, is pretty good. Some things that everybody should have. Everybody should carry one of these, a headlamp. Um, it's really great. Climbing in and out of your tent, going to the bathroom at night, working on your bike in the dark. I mean, it's just so much easier than having to have someone hold the flashlight for you or hold the flashlight, you know, under your chin or whatever. Um, I also carry this with me. Um, this is just an adult poncho. It's, you know, it's a very large poncho. I've never even had to use it so far, um, but I have it if I need it, if worse comes to worse, and it's just pouring, and I need some kind of coverage. Um, next, these extra large Ziploc bags. These are great um, if you think you're going to encounter any rain. Last year, um, I put my sleeping bag in one of them. And then vacuumed it down using my little pump, and I put my tent inside it because what I what I didn't want was uh, my stuff to be wet before I even got to my camping area. So uh, pack your clothes in them, whatever. They're great because they're really inexpensive. They're really sturdy. I think you get like ten of them in a package for like eight dollars or something like that. Um, you can put your clothes in them and vacuum them down, and it kind of compresses your clothes so that uh, they'll fit into your sleeping or your saddlebags a lot better. Then I have these Mad Dog tank bags. Um, I, I know I did a video on these already. They've been really great. They were like $11. Um, I've used them for almost a solid year now. The only complaint I have with them is the Velcro on the back gets worn out and um, if you start putting too much weight in them, when you hit some serious bumps, they will come up off the tank and kind of bounce around. But other than that, they've been really great. Um, and for the price, really, if you spend $10, $11 a year on them and they last you only a year, that's not a bad thing. I've used them on my tank, and I've also slapped them over the back of the seat and let them hang onto the number plates. So um, they're great little bags. Then on to this jacket. So this jacket was something that I got uh, through my company actually from a distributor. But it's not necessarily the, who I got it from or where I got it. It's the material. So this is, particular jacket is made by Port Authority. And it is called the Soft Shell Jacket. This jacket is literally paper thin, but we at work we like to call them seal skins. Uh, let me open it up. Inside, it's a nice soft fleece. On the outside, it is this like microfiber, almost like um, like a wetsuit material. Um, these jackets are fantastic. I have worn this thing riding to work at five in the morning in forty degree weather and I'm almost sweating. Um, they are windproof and water resistant. Um, I wore it one day, I went to an off-road ride and I had sweated in it 
and I folded it up and put it on the back of my uh, bike and literally eight to ten hours later when I decided to put it back on because it was starting to cool off at five in the evening it was still wet inside from the sweat it literally had sealed it in um, so these jackets are amazing and they're so thin that they can fold up and be thrown just about anywhere I mean I put them inside these little mad dog bags um, it's just an all-around great jacket so you're probably thinking what's in the crown royal bags this guy drinks a lot of crown royal actually I just kind of collect these bags from uh, anybody who's got them usually like my father-in-law uses them a lot but what's in here this is my mess kit this is my stove and this off actually should have been with the miscellaneous stuff but this really is just a pair of safety glasses I, I uh, recommend anybody carries an extra pair of safety glasses because you never know um, sometimes when you're riding slow like I have the uh, the fly helmet there with the flip down visor and sometimes when you're riding slow it just gets fogged up and there's nothing you do right now I have a pair of tinted safety glasses in here but it's really nice to be able to open your visor and uh, just throw some safety glasses in either because they're tinted or you know your visor gets a rock and gets broken and not everybody's going to carry an extra visor with them while they're riding so I keep those wrapped up in a um, microfiber cloth uh, kind of saves space at the same time I just have it in case I even need that to clean my visor um, and then I keep it inside this little crown royal bag and it just keeps it safe and uh, tidy so we'll move on to cooking supplies so everybody wants to spend a hundred dollars on a jet boil and let me just tell you the last time I went camping I was the only person that did, I think did not have a jet boil and I was also the only person that ate a full breakfast because everybody else with their jet boil only packed a little bit of water and or something that they could basically toast on the jet boil I am sure that jet boils are great but I really prefer this inexpensive solution um, this is an Esbit. They're used by the Royal Air Force, from what I've heard. Um, they do get a little bit dirty, which is why I keep it in the Crown Royal bag so that this dirtiness doesn't get all over my other stuff. But basically, this is how it works. It folds open. There's two ways. There's two settings. You can either have it full open like this. Um, these are fuel blocks. You can buy a pack of these for about... I think it's less than ten dollars you get like ten or twelve of them you get like a dozen of them and you can fit um, I think I had four or six inside of this but they're so small you can really fit them anywhere um, so as you can see this little square in the middle is where you put this block um, they claim that they burn for about uh, nine minutes but I've had them burn closer to about fifteen um, these blocks are waterproof you can basically douse them with water and still light them with a lighter so they're fantastic in that aspect um, like I said there's two settings to this you can have this full open or you can close it down to kind of focus the heat a little bit so it's, it's like that and you can use this on top of a rock or on top of a park bench uh, whatever and then also inside my little bag I keep a lighter everybody should have a lighter with them and I, I tend to pick uh, pink and purple because they stand out and uh, guys won't tend to steal them from you so there's my there's my stove now let's talk about my mess kit oh this Esbit stove is about $12 um, and it cooks just as well as the jet boil in my opinion and although there are fire restrictions somewhere for the most part um, you can kind of get away with this because it's so small um, it's very easily hidden doesn't make a lot of smoke this is my mess kit uh, in fact I think my mess kit's still dirty from the last trip I went on uh, so it might be gross let me open this up <clears throat> basically turn this little guy right here some of you older guys have probably seen these when you used to go camping right you leave the handle on here and this is a pan and it's aluminum so here's my bowl and you have a pot with a lid 
and that just goes right on there. Um, it comes with a cup. And then this is something you can pick up at uh, most stores. This is a tea strainer. And what this tea strainer is great for is coffee. Everybody needs coffee, right? So you pour your coffee grounds in here. Boil some water in this guy. Dump it in here. Soak your tea strainer in there so you make some coffee. And voila. Um, this, little pan, this little lid fits your pan. So you got a frying pan, you got a pot, and you have a bowl to eat out of. Okay, this mess kit, um, this one, this particular one is aluminum. Uh, the reason I like the aluminum one, it heats up a lot faster than um, the stainless steel one. They do have one. It's the exact same size at Walmart. It's stainless steel. It's a couple dollars more. I think this one was about ten dollars. It was like eight or nine dollars. Also, there's this. Um, this is made by Ozark Trail. Also. This is a um, eating kit, so you flip this open. Like I said, these are dirty. I need to wash them. Um, I just went on a ride a couple weeks ago, and I made my lunch on this. So um, you flip those open, and this actually comes apart into two pieces. So you have a knife, and you have a spoon, or instead of a spoon, you have a, I'm sorry, a fork and a spoon, or you have a knife and a fork. So if you're eating meat, you got a knife and fork. Um, if you're going to eat, you know, soup like I did last time, you got a spoon. And uh, all this stuff can go in the dishwasher. I've thrown it in the dishwasher before. And uh, on here also is a, a can opener right here, bot can, can and bottle opener, and then a cork puller, which, I don't know, I wouldn't be carrying wine with me while I was. That's just me. And then uh, see how it has these little pegs on there? It has a peg on one side and then a hole on the other. And they literally just fit together like that. And when you flip the spoon closed, it locks on one pin. Oops, sorry, let me move my fat finger. And when you flip the fork closed, there you go. That's your utensil kit all in one little tight package. And like I said, all this stuff fits in this little Crown Royal bag. So, um, I think the total weight of all of it is maybe a pound or two. So I'll show you again how this all goes back together. So I'll put this in here. It goes in there. My pencil kit fits right alongside. And this guy. This goes over the top. Kit. And it's about, um, let's say it's about three to four inches high by about eight inches wide. And again, like I said, mine fits in the Crown Royal bag, so it's not that big. So all together, I have, excuse me, all together, I have all of my cooking and eating for maybe about less than twenty dollars. I know everybody says, oh, you got to go flameless because, you know, in the forest, don't let you do this and that. And like I said, for the most part, if you are not starting a big fire, um, if you're not burning wood, if you're not, you know, building a fire pit, most rangers probably will not ding you over an esbit if you're using it safely. Um, like I said, put it on a rock, put it on a bench, put it on a flat piece of steel, whatever. Um, you'll be okay. And again, they cook so quickly. Um, those little blocks, I've actually put them out with water and saved them and reused them again. Okay, let's talk a little bit about tools. Um, this is basically my basic minimal setup that I bring. Um, there's actually a few things missing that are out in the garage right now. Um, in this toolkit, I have 10, 12, 14 and an eight wrench. Um, I have my spark plug socket here that came out of the original toolkit. Um, this is a little safety hammer. It's kind of like a multi-tool. It's got a saw and a pair of pliers and um, a knife on it. 
Um, it works pretty well. You never know when you're going to need a little hammer. A lot of people say, oh, just use a rock, but it's, it's actually pretty handy. Um, spanner wrench, uh, usually have a second um, uh, tire spoon in here, but it's actually out in the garage. Um, some some Loctite, some blue Loctite, take care with me. Um, Phillips, flathead, and of course, spare lever. Always, always carry a spare lever. <laughs> It takes very little to break a lever out in the middle of nowhere, and it's very hard to rig one to work when it's broken. So just carry a spare one. Do yourself a favor. Um, I've also seen guys that carry um, spare cables, and what they'll do is they'll just zip tie the spare cables alongside the existing cable, which is a brilliant idea because then what happens when the main cable breaks, you basically just have to undo the ends and put the spare cable right in place and it's already routed properly um, it's a brilliant idea next carry a tube um, I usually only carry the it just depends if I'm running my saddlebags I'll carry both a, a tube for the front and the rear um, if I'm just running my little tank bags uh, I'll run I'll carry just the front because the front will fit in a 17 but the 17 won't fit around a 21 inch rim um, and then of course my slime pump these are great. They're, you can get them at Walmart for about $13, and they will fully inflate your tire up to 35 pounds. So there's no uh, there's no problem with those whatsoever. Okay, so I want to show you real quick. Um, I fit my tool kit, my mess kit, my stove, my uh, slime pump, and this spare tube all in these. Uh, small bags here. So, uh, I'm put my mess pin here, <clears throat> my toolkit in behind it. That's one bag. And then my stove just kind of sits on top of my mess kit. Uh, they're kind of tight to zip, so I won't zip it shut right now. But, um, and then in this side, Put my that, my air pump and my tube, and that's pretty much it. Maybe I, I mean I guess I could. I mean, these are great little bags. You can fit a lot in them. Like I said, they're not real big and. Um, as long as you don't put a whole lot of weight in them, um, they'll stay velcroed to the uh, tank. Um, somebody suggested that I get some, uh, there's like this industrial velcro, I guess. But, anyways, there, there's all that. And then actually now I have more room over here. I can actually put my, if I need to, <coughs> my rain poncho. can be stuffed in here. My headlamp, if I wanted to. Uh, it doesn't have to be super neatly packed. The rain poncho just kind of squishes down. All right, and just zip it up, and you've got these cool little bags. Um, this, like I said, this hole I had to cut it out fit over my. Uh, this hole I had to cut out fit over my gas can, um, but uh, they're great little bags, and I can fit a whole lot of stuff in them and not have to carry anything else. So that's pretty much it. Um, had some downtime today, and I just wanted to show you guys the stuff that I use. Um, it's very inexpensive. I think probably everything that I carry with me total has cost me, I don't know, not even $100, maybe. Uh, I don't know, the tent and the mattress. Yeah, I guess, I guess maybe I'm going to say probably like $150 for all my gear, uh, which isn't really that bad. I mean, there's... There are things out there you can throw thousands of dollars at. Um, you know, I I read somewhere that, you know, moto camping is like being homeless at, you know, five times the price. So, um, I mean, and that's true. <laughs> it's like you would choose to go out and camp in the middle of nowhere and you're going to pay for, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of gear. Homeless people don't do that. They figure it out, you know. Um, but anyways... 
You can throw, you know, I, I, I'm not a rich guy, so I just like to show that there are cheap options out there to still do these things and have fun. Um, you know, I'll, in this video, I'll post a picture of what it looks like attached to my bike with the saddlebags. And the, the saddlebags that I use are an old pair of sport bike saddlebags that I've had for 10 years. Um, they're not very big. Um, they're kind of wider than I like. And I have been looking at the uh, Wolfman panniers because um, they're more of a lateral or I mean, I'm sorry, they're more of a vertical saddlebag than a lateral saddlebag. Uh, my saddlebags right now are, are pretty wide, and they're not very deep. Um, either that or I'm also looking into some plastic ammo cans that I've been reading about. Um, they're pretty lightweight, but they're pretty sturdy. So with that said, um, there's going to be another video of... Some of the mods that I've done on my bike um, for both comfort and utilitarian use. Uh, again, not a lot of money, and uh, that's what it's all about. So uh, I hope you check me out next time. This is Mike, and thanks for watching Beyond Two Wheels. Um.